Hi friends, welcome to my channel where we 50 plus women come together to help each other stay in the game. And today I'll be sharing eight instant ways to look younger with makeup. And if you're not a subscriber, I would love you to join the 50 plus beauty family. If you're on your cell phone, I think the bell is right down there. And if you are on your computer, the bell is right down there. And when you click that bell, that just sends you email notifications of my future videos. I would love to have you. And today I will be discussing eight instant ways to look younger with makeup. And this is the younger version. And to show you the older version, I'll show you a before and after of how I look this afternoon before the video. And on the left, you can see the way I wore my makeup in the 80s and 90s for sure. And I still tend to veer off in that direction very heavy shimmery eye makeup, very full coverage foundation, darker lipstick, just looking a little older on the left side. And then on the right is how I'm looking right now. Everything is much lighter. The eyeshadow is much lighter. It's not so heavy. The skin looks actually skin-like and not just covered with oily makeup. So anyway, that is what we are going for today. And I will say that anything I say in this video is just my opinion. And quite honestly, these are sort of rules, but I break them all the time, depending upon the occasion or how I choose to look. And some of the things I say one shouldn't do, if you do them and love them, then you keep doing them. Makeup is an individual choice, so you just keep rocking whatever look you want. And I don't want you to think, because this video was sort of titled, Look Younger With Makeup, that I think looking older is bad. I don't but you clicked on this video so you obviously like the idea of looking a little younger and fresher and to me there's nothing wrong with that it's kind of like if you bought a car 30 years ago you would do those little things get out the dents and dings do those little things to keep your car looking its best and i feel we're just as important as a car if there are certain things we can do with our makeup to keep our faces looking kind of showroom fresh then i don't have a problem with that okay let's get into this and the first tip is to use primers and by primers, I mean both a lid primer and a face primer. Let me show you the results of using a lid primer this afternoon. And I have been using the Urban Decay Anti-Aging Lid Primer. And quite honestly, I'm not sure if it does any more than the normal Urban Decay Primer. But of course, I was attracted to that anti-aging feature, whatever that means. But let me show you the before and after. Here you can see on the left, I do have the primer on. And in the right side, I've got a lot of veins and discoloration. My lids are very red. But on the side using the lid primer, I have a clean canvas. So my eyeshadow will go in place more smoothly and it will stay in place longer. Now, the second important primer is actually using a face primer. And quite honestly, I don't do this all the time. And it wasn't till about maybe a week and a half ago, I did a video in which I did not use my face primer that I've been using. And I've really been liking this Stila One Step Correct Primer. It's a color correcting primer. And in that video, I did not use this. And in editing, I thought, oh my gosh, I don't look very good. And I realized the difference was that I had not used this little color correcting primer. First, let me show you a before and after picture of what this does on your face, before and after. Basically, these little colors, especially the green, null out red in your skin. In the left, I have no primer on, and in the right, I have the Stila One Step Correct on, and the red is largely out of my skin. I have a much more even canvas upon which to apply my makeup. And you may say, hmm, I didn't really see much of a difference there. And quite honestly, I didn't see much of a difference either just in applying the primer. The difference really showed in my foundation when I wasn't wearing the primer. So let me show you this. In the picture on the left, that was the video where I was not wearing the Stila One Step Correct. And as you can see, my skin on the left has a lot of red discolorations, especially around the cheeks. And then on the right, I was wearing the primer. And as you can see, my skin tone just looks more even. And there's just a healthier overall glow in the after picture than in the before picture without the primer. Tip number two is to back off on shimmery shadows. And I will say that I still like them, but I have a different way to wear them that I'll share with you in just a minute. But as those of you who have followed my channel know, you know that I absolutely love this Natasha Denona palette. And look at all those shimmers. In fact, I like it so much that this is my second ND palette, my second Natasha Denona palette. But I have really realized through looking at my videos and editing that it is very aging to use total shimmer shadows all over your lid. Well, what I have on today is a matte shadow, and I've really been loving this. This is the Lorac Pro Matte Palette, and as you can see, it has very, very neutral shadows, but they are all matte, which is just wonderful. And that is what I have on my eyes today. I have this little one on the lid, this little one on the brow, 
And then I went with a lighter color in the transition than I normally do. And that is another kind of mini tip in this, that when you're trying to decide on a color for your transition or eyeshadow color in general, if you want to look younger and fresher, always opt for the lighter color. Now, obviously you can't see my heavier, more aging makeup right now, so I'll go back to before and after picture. As you can see in the top picture, I have very shimmering eyeshadows on, and I've even taken my eyeliner down underneath my eyes. And in the after picture on the bottom, I have totally matte shadows. They really blend out much more nicely. I have nothing under my eyes at all, no mascara and no eyeliner. And in comparing the same pictures, when you look really closely in the top picture, you can see a lot of texture, a lot of wrinkles on my eyelids. You can see a little sagging lid in the top left and in the bottom picture that is largely blended out and you really don't notice them anymore. And I have to say that I will not stop using shimmery shadows. I do like them. So the best way to use them is to take a little brush and this is the Angie 505, little tiny brush here. You can actually dip this brush in to a little bit of shimmer shadow and then just put one little swipe. Oh gosh, this is dangerous. Just one little swipe. Yeah, I like that. Just one little swipe. Try to do it carefully so I don't ruin this makeup. Yes, you can just put one little swipe of shimmer in the center of that eyelid and that's what I need to make myself do because I do like a little bit of shimmer, but you can really tone it down by applying a small amount of shimmer on a nice little eyeshadow brush right in the middle of your eyelid. Tip number three is to soften your eyeliner. And I used to be very guilty of using these pure on point eyeliners. I love them because they have a beautifully sharpened tip and they just are very, very easy to use and they go on like a dream. And if you really like traditional eyeliners, I think you would really like this. But when I was editing myself in videos, I started noticing that my upper eye line was really, really heavy. And half the time I lined under my eyes or used darker shadow under my eyes and that was aging as well. So what I decided to do was to totally lighten up on my eyeliner. And there are two ways to do that. The first way is to use just a tiny bit of eyeshadow as an eyeliner. And to do that, what I do is I take the Angie 208 brush. It's so tiny, I can hardly tell you what number it is. Depending upon your coloring, you might use the black, but I always go for the darkest brown in a palette usually because I am into softness. And I'm a blonde, so black is pretty harsh for me. And so basically you just take a little bit of that and you spray your little brush with setting spray so it can really pick up that color. And I normally use the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. However, in my last video where I mentioned that, several women said, hey, this Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Finishing Spray, and they said they liked it better than the Urban Decay All Nighter, both for spraying on your makeup brushes before you apply foundation, and also for a finishing spray to bring on that dewy look. And so we'll try that in just a few moments. I'm not very experienced with this, but we'll try it for sure. And if you'd like to use eyeshadow as a liner, but you really don't want to go to the hassle of having the brush and spraying the brush and all of that, it's a little difficult to apply, but it's pretty easy to get the hang of. Then there is a Charlotte Tilbury product that I mentioned in my 2021 favorites video. And this is called the Classic Eye Powder Pencil. And what it is actually is a powdered eyeshadow in a stick. And you do have to put it in your sharpener every time before you use it. And it gives you the same effect of a powder shadow without going through the brush and the spray and all of that. And I will say, don't expect this to go on like a normal eyeliner that is very smooth and glowy and easy. This is a little bit chunky and so you do have to work with it a bit, but I do think it is less work than using the eyeshadow out of a palette. And while I'm on this point of eyes, I saw a video by Dominique Sachi, I think that's her name, and she said that as she's gotten older, she's completely stopped using mascara and liner under her eyes, except for water lining in the under eye area. And at first I have to admit that felt really weird to me because I have years of kind of spidery lashes underneath my eyes and using a lot of heavy liner or dark eyeshadow under there, but I stopped it and it felt weird for a few days and now I really do like it. The idea is that if you just line on top of your eyes and put mascara only on the top, you are drawing your eyes up and that when you put the mascara and liner on the bottom, it draws your eyes down, which is never good as we age. And one more thing I did want to mention to you though, when I use the eyeshadow as liner or the powder shadow stick, I always go in with something in the waterline. And these are great little sticks. They've been around for a while. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Smoldering Eyeliner in black and in brown. And I use the brown because I think it's much softer. And as we age, you might wanna to switch to a lighter color like brown because it's a lot less harsh. 
but basically these go beautifully in the waterline and they just give you that look of thick lashes, which is just wonderful. And my fourth tip is to use peach color corrector under your eyes and in the little corners here that tend to be dark. And this is the one I've been loving lately. This is the Pixie by Petra Peach Corrector. And basically what I do there is I take my Angie under eye concealer brush and it is wonderful. This is the A506. And I just dip it right there in that peach corrector. Well, you can't really, <laughs> I've got too long of nails to show you what it looks like. Okay, I'll just put some on my finger here. Basically what it does is it nulls out black under your eyes and in the corners. There it is. Very, very natural looking. Let me show you the before and after of what it really looks like on. As you can see on the right, where I've used the peach corrector, my under eye just looks a lot more even. There's not nearly as much darkness around that eye. But then on the left, where I have not used the peach corrector, you can see that under eye vein. You can see a lot of darkness beside the nose. My eye just looks older and more tired in the side without the peach corrector. Now, my next tip is to lighten up on your foundation. And I was reminded of this the other day because I absolutely love Stila. It's the Stila Stay All Day Foundation. So it's a heavy coverage foundation. And the thing that I really liked about it is it has the foundation in the bottom and then it has a little corrector on the top. And I only used this once and I have to say I was horrified. It was kind of like looking in the mirror and going, oh my gosh, I look 30 years older. It's kind of like the Baby Jane movies. I looked like Baby Jane. And let me show you the before and after picture again so you can get an idea of what that looked like. In the before picture on the left, as you can see, I'm wearing the Stila Heavy Coverage Foundation. It looks oily, it looks heavy, it looks dark. And I'm also wearing the under eye concealer, which was kind of a train wreck. I don't know if you can see it, but underneath my eyes, my eyes look like a train track, a myriad of wrinkles everywhere. And yes, I do have wrinkles, but this certainly exacerbated them. So instead of going for heavy coverage, as we could maybe in our 30s and 40s, it's very important to kind of lighten up on our foundation. And I have been using this foundation lately. It's called a slip tint. It's basically moisturizer mixed with foundation, and I really love it. I don't know if you can see that, but it just makes my skin look fresh and dewy. It contains hyaluronic acid, which keeps the moisture in your skin. I think that's why it looks so dewy. And it also has an SPF of 35. And you use a lot of this because it does go on like a moisturizer. So I really do feel confident about the SPF in this because since it's a moisturizer, you really do have to put a lot of it on your face. I really love the coverage. You can build it up in those areas where you need, and it does seem to last a long time. Now tip number six is to use cream blush. And I've been really loving this one by Makeup by Mario. I think I'll put a little more on. And it's got this little blush brush on one side, which is just great. And then the other side is the blush. And this is in an apricot color. I'll list it below. I'll just put a little bit on. I really don't need it, but I think it's so pretty. I just kind of wanted to show it to you. So then you could take the included brush here, or I always like the BK Beauty or Angie brushes. This happens to be the BK Beauty 107 brush. I could not put my hands on the Angie one. They're really about the same, but look how beautifully natural that looks. Just so pretty. I do love this. But something about cream blushes, especially when we get older, they just look so natural. They don't settle into fine lines and wrinkles and the powder blushes can tend to look like they're sitting on top of our skin. They tend to give us more of a powdery, heavy, cakey look where these cream blushes just look a little dewier, a little fresher, and a little more natural. Now, tip number seven is to lighten up your lipstick. And I don't really have a before and after here, but I am very guilty of going from the nudes to really intense colors. And in the store, I think the really intense color is a great idea. But let me show you a picture of how I looked like in a red lipstick. And I actually did a video about this. That is pretty darn terrifying. And I used to be able to get away with red lips when I was in my 20s. And in fact, when I was in college, I would always wear like this deep blue red lipstick. And for some reason it looks okay, but once you get older and you have some lip wrinkles and some dryness on your lips, those dark lipsticks really don't do us any favors. And one thing I have been doing consistently for the last couple of weeks is to moisten up my lips. Before I start my makeup, what I do is I use a little bit of the City Lips Clear Gloss and I let it sit on my lips as I'm doing the rest of my makeup and it just is very moisturizing. And I think it plumps out my lips just a little bit. It's their plumping lip gloss. 
Then I go ahead and do my makeup. And one thing I tried for the first time today, I can't give you a report on it, is the line blurring wrinkle filter. And this is very highly rated online, but I've only used it one day and I really don't have too much trouble with lip wrinkles. However, what you do with this is you just apply it and you pat it on your lips and you let it dry and it does fill in those wrinkles. And I really do think maybe it made my lips look a little bit more smooth, but you do that and you make sure that you let it dry before you apply your lipstick. And then I went in with this Sephora lipstick. It is lipstick number three, whatever that is. And I just think it's the prettiest little kind of tannish nude color. I'll put that on for you. There is how that looks. And then I won't put on the lip liner again, but I'm loving these BK Beauty Everlast Lip Liners. And this is in the color Warm Spice. And I'll just give you a little tip. And that is that we don't really want harsh lines around our lips when we get older. So go ahead and apply your lipstick first and then go around the edges with the lip liner because then it is not nearly so noticeable, but I do love this lip liner. And then I just went back in using the City Lips Clear Lip Gloss. I'll go ahead and put that on so you can see what it looks like. Just a little bit right there in the middle. But isn't that pretty? It just gives you a very natural shine and it makes your lips just look very moisturized, very moist and very fresh. And I will say that two or three years ago, I really loved matte lipsticks, but now I've gotten just enough older that the mattes aren't doing me any favors, but I still like them, I still buy them, but I just use something like the City Lips Lip Plumping Gloss over them to bring back that fresh, moisturized look. Okay, tip number eight is something I learned the hard way, and that is blend, baby, blend. And before I tell you what this tip entails, let me show you a picture of myself that I actually took out of one of my videos. Sadly, I did have to post the video, and so I went through the whole video looking like this. But as you can see by the arrows, I have contour up along my hairline that is not blended at all. I have blush that is very poorly blended. And if I turn to the side, you would see that the contour underneath my cheekbones looks like chocolate bars too. And so what I do, and this is not a BK Beauty brush. In fact, I wish they would invent this brush. If you're watching Lisa J, I think you could really use this brush. Maybe they have it already, but I'm sure not aware of it. But this is the Real Techniques, what is it called? It is called Sculpting Brush. And it's just a really tight little bristle brush. And what it's for is, once you've put the contour where you want it to be and you've done your blush, you just go in with this little brush and just kind of buff things out. Just kind of buff things out, like under there. Just buff that out. You can even go on top. If you feel like your blush needs a little blending, you can buff that out too. This brush feels soft as mink and the bristles are so tightly packed that it does a fantastic job of really blending out all of your makeup so that you don't wear chocolate bars around. And inevitably, I never seem to notice that until after I've shot a whole video. And I have had the problem a lot in the past, especially in this area of not blending my contour well. But since I've been using this one, if I remember to use it, it really does work to create a fresher, smoother makeup. Okay, that was eight tips, but I have a little bonus tip for you. And that is that as we age, our hair tends to thin out. And of course, hair is not makeup, but it does surround your face. It kind of frames your face very nicely, hopefully. And the older I get, the more it seems like my hair thins out. So I did want to give you a bonus tip, which is to add body. And I'm still not sure whether I like the curls and I've been curling my hair in some videos lately. I use that T3 styler. In fact, I'll show you a picture if I can of the beachy waves I created with that. But I think I prefer the T3 jumbo rollers. They're just little hot rollers, but they're a jumbo size and they really do add body to your hair. And that's what I really like. I like smoothness and I like body. I'm just not sure about the curls. So if you have an opinion about beachy waves for me versus a more smooth, sleek style, please let me know in the comment section below the video. Also, please let me know if you'd like to see a hair tools video, I'd go into hair tools and also some great products that I really do believe create volume. Okay, again, I hope you'll subscribe to my video and or give the video a thumbs up. And I forgot to apply what I told you I'd apply earlier, so I'm going to do it now. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Setting Spray. And let me go ahead, I did use it to apply my foundation, but I'll go ahead and do a little spritz. Nice mist, woo! Okay, that is a look at the Charlotte Tilbury Setting Spray, and I do think I like it. I think it's very dewy and very fresh looking. Well, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and my thought for the day involves the finishing touch on your makeup. And that is that makeup can only go so far, and actually beauty is an inside job. It goes from the inside to the out. 
And this comment is, no matter what your age, go out into the world feeling confident and feeling like you look your best. And a lot of people would think that I have a lot of confidence because I have a YouTube channel, but I really don't. I'm really kind of a quiet person and I'm not really outgoing in terms of being out into the world. But what I do when I want to look confident is I remember that everyone needs a smile. And so I try to remember to smile a lot. And I also try to remember to act as if. When you're going into a social setting that makes you feel a little bit scared, a little bit like, oh, am I gonna be able to handle that? Act as if you have confidence and ask yourself, how would someone with confidence act? And put your body in that stance, like put your shoulders back, stand up straight, put on a smile and walk into that room, exuding the confidence that a confident person would. And you'll be surprised to realize that the other people in the room, they're, they're thinking more about themselves than about you, but they will perceive you as a confident person. And if you start doing that and consistently remind yourself to act as if you are confident, before you know it, you actually will be. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.